Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. I'm thinking about starting a GoFundMe page because I'm a little short this week and I need to get a case of beer. Sounds reasonable. I think it might be better if you tried to do it for me. Um, you know, people respect you more. I'm going to need a piece of that action. Oh, so you're going to need some beer? Yeah. All yeah. Right. Well, on today's show, we have some of the biggest scandals to hit GoFundMe. And we'll share those with you next on Men Are So Smart. Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. We're glad you're here. I'm Luke Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. On the show today, uh, we'll be talking about the biggest scandals to hit GoFundMe. Before we get to that, though, I wanted to thank our sponsors, Treco Welding Supplies and Magna Gas, also A&C Marine, and Capital Mobile Break. Thank you for all that you do. We hope that you'll enjoy today's show. And if you do, give it a big old thumbs up. We like that. Subscribe to our channel. You can do that below. And when you do, click the bell. That way you get notifications each time a new show comes out. Johnny Bobbitt was both a villain and a victim. A former Marine, Bobbitt, quit 14 months into a four-year commitment to the armed service as per Marine Corps times. He had no record of deployment, but received the National Defense Service Medal. Eventually, he ended up homeless and on drugs, and at some point, he crossed paths with New Jersey couple Kate McClure and Mark Diamico. Together, you got it, they tricked the internet into trying to help Bobbitt get off the streets. Yeah, it seems weird to think. You would have to dupe people into assisting an actual homeless ex-Marine. But, as McClure cynically explained in a text message, I had to make something up to make people feel bad. That made-up something was a tear-jerking story about Bobbitt giving McClure his last $20 when she ran out of gas and got stranded on a roadside. The public's collective heart swelled, and GoFundMe donations for Bobbitt reached over Four hundred thousand dollars. Man, I'd buy a lot of beer, Ron. And and if you know, I, I'd I'd give you a case for sure. Uh, while they got the money in an unacceptable way, once they had it, McClure and Diamico could have really helped Bob. But instead, they blew most of the money on a BMW. Yep. Gambling at casinos. Wow. Luxury handbags. Bob it cried foul. Authorities raided the couple's home, and the lie fell apart. All three were charged with theft and conspiracy. Boy. I remember on the news a, a picture of a flatbed tow truck with that BMW on the back. Good. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. I picture Gomer Pyle going, shame, <laughs> shame, shame, Andy. <laughs> yeah, that's that was, and that's probably that's got to be the number one. That was. Absolutely despicable. Uh, next one is a marathon of fraud. Oh, yeah. This is uh, the Boston Marathon. Boston Marathon. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. In 2013, Joanna Lee publicly patted herself on the back for unseen acts of heroism after the Boston Marathon bombing. Uh, the reason no one, no one saw them is because they never happened. Uh, as a, a local TV station explained... Lee went to a viewing party for the marathon, but left before the attack. Mm. However, in her version of the events, a bomb exploded 10 feet away from her and knocked her out. Mm -hmm. uh, when she came to, no brain damage, no hearing loss, and no burning in her eyes could stop her from helping other injured people. Mm -hmm. Clearly, unconcerned about her own well-being, she didn't bother seeing a doctor for days, Imaginary injuries and non-existent PTSD would leave her unable to work for at least two years. Wow. Yeah. What, uh, what evil must be in this person's heart? Let's find out. Posing as someone else, Lee launched a GoFundMe campaign and net, netted $9,350. She also received nearly thirty grand through two victims' funds and a student fundraiser. To top it all off, she got about $900 worth of free dermatology services, because God knows she probably needed that. 
<laughs> because if you can't have a clear conscience, then at least you'd have clear skin. Okay, yeah, yeah. terrific. Of course, Lee probably had no conscience. Despite not deserving any money, she complained to NPR that one fund Boston only gave her $8,000. Wow. The one thing she didn't bank on was people checking her story. Photographic, video, and eyewitnesses' evidence thoroughly discredited her claims. In court, she confessed and was sentenced to probation and community service. That's not enough. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. That I mean, what goes on, excuse me, <laughs> what goes on in a person's mind that they think somehow that's right? What is it? Are they born with this? Do we need an exorcist? I mean, it's, you know, what you take it, because that was clearly, that was, that's, it's not quite on 9-11 standards, but it's, it's pretty close. Oh, hell yeah. It's an attack on an American tradition. Mm -hmm. I was actually at work when it happened. Mm -hmm. uh, at a very high security place. Yeah, at a super high security place. And we went into a uh, red mode. Oh, wow. Because of it. So, uh, and then to take advantage of that, and also, if you haven't seen the movie, I think it's called Patriot Day. Games? Patriot Day, I believe. Okay. It's got uh, Mark Wahlberg in it. Excellent movie, and it's all about the uh, the Boston Marathon bombing. Oh, yeah, I read about that. Very, very good, well-done movie. Yeah, that's what I heard. But, I mean, man, to try to jump on that. And she got money that was earmarked for real victims. She wasn't a victim, so... Man. Yeah, she got lucky just getting uh, probation and some, you know, some community service. Well, you know what? If you think that's bad, we've got more for you. Oh. This is our list of scandals, the biggest ones to ever hit GoFundMe. Uh, this one is, they call it Charity with Strings Attached. Uh, Fred Barley's story was like a blanket for the human heart. Left homeless after a fight with his mother... Barley embarked on a six-hour, 50-mile bike ride to Barnesville, Georgia, and lived in a tent so he could register for college classes. When approached by police, Barley, who's black, became apprehensive because of news stories about altercations be between uh, black people and law enforcement. But the officers not only treated him kindly, they paid for him to stay at a local hot hotel. It's amazing what some police officers will do, and you don't even hear about it. Right. Now. Yeah. That... Now here's something where... They're helping somebody out with their own money, I know. Yeah, well, that stuff never makes news because right. it's not that's not clickbait. Right. Uh, when Blaney heard, uh, then uh, Casey Blaney comes into the story, and she heard about Blarney's, Barley's story, mm -hmm. and she felt compelled to help. And what better way than to set up a GoFundMe account sure. and finance his education? Yeah. People donated $184,000. Gee, Ron, I would think that would probably go a long way. That would probably get you education. through some college, some college classes. Well, if the story sounds, you know, too good to be true, it's because you haven't read the rest of it. As per the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Barley and Blaney, hey, they do mornings here in Sacramento, I think. <laughs> uh, Barley and Blaney began bickering over who would manage the money. It's always over the money. Blaney accused Barley of wanting money to be handed to him and started questioning the veracity of his story. Barley argued that Blaney was being a control freak. In reaction to the controversy, GoFundMe froze the account. Good on them. Meanwhile, rumors circulated that Barley wanted to go to another town. Some Barnesville residents felt betrayed or accused of outright fraud. Uh, others suggested that Blaney intended to keep the donations herself. She and Barley eventually agreed to place the money in a trust since they clearly didn't trust each other. Yeah. But where is that money going to go? Eventually, it's got to go to somebody. Right. Well, and hopefully, uh, I'm sure there's some legal documents that go along with it, but hopefully they say that it can only be used for books and college expenses, because otherwise... Yeah, that seems to make perfect sense. Yeah. Huh? Uh, otherwise, we know exactly what's going to happen to it. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, this one. Oh, I don't like this one. Uh, they call this one, When Lying Becomes Child Abuse. Uh, lots of parents deceive their children, mainly about where babies come from and Christmas presents, but certainly lies are typically off-limits because they amount to abuse. Among them is telling a healthy child 
that they're fatally ill. Uh, however, some parents have crossed that line to bolster the believability of GoFundMe scams. In 2017, a Florida couple tricked their 13-year-old son into believing he had a terminal brain cancer. Uh, the parents claimed medical treatment would render him a vegetable. For eight months, the boy believed he was dying. He told teachers and others at school and was understandably frightened at times. Someone got suspicious and alerted authorities when the parents started selling t-shirts to raise money. It's unclear how much they earned from GoFundMe, but they made 140 bucks off of nine shirts. Uh, Nevada residents Victoria Morrison took this already unthinkable scheme to an even more disturbing extreme. After discovering her son had a untreatable, or excuse me, a treatable childhood illness, Morrison grossly exaggerated his condition. She told her son that he had leukemia and kept him out of school for months. Eventually, she claimed he died, pretended to mourn him at a phony memorial service, and said he was cremated. Morrison was foiled by the absence of a death certificate and the presence of her very alive son, but not before raising roughly $2,000 on GoFundMe. She was sentenced to five to 12 and a half years of prison. Wow. Doesn't seem worth it for 12000 bucks. You know... You never wish something upon a child like that. No. Yeah. My mother used to tell me that. You know, never wish that. That is because when you do, it could come true. Karma. And and then what? Yeah, karma. All right, our next one, biggest scandals of uh, GoFundMe history. A radio host does the despicable. Cleveland radio host J.G. Spooner had treachery running through his veins. That gets back to what goes through somebody's heart and what goes through somebody's head, huh? However, like many skilled con artists, he did his dishonesty behind a self-aggrandizing display of fake virtue. 2015, Spooner volunteered to promote a GoFundMe campaign to cover the medical bills of Allison Thaddeus Zappe, a woman he knew since elementary school. Thaddeus Zappe had cystic fibrosis, which, as you may know, ravages sufferers' lungs with relentless infections and increasingly hinders their breathing. Naturally, she and her family welcome Spooner's help. And then... And then... He pulled the rug out from underneath them. It was coming. Spooner chart changed the GoFundMe password and stole over $6,000 from the account. Thaddeus Zappi passed away weeks later, much of which time she spent upset about the, stun, the funds being stolen. Uh, when her family confronted Spooner... He pointed the finger at GoFundMe and made a show of threatening to take legal action. Clearly, this wasn't a sustainable lie. Neither was an unrelated scheme in which Spooner made over $8,500 pretending to rent out a home he didn't own to strangers on Craigslist. Oh, my God. In court, he pleaded guilty to theft and was sentenced to 30 months behind bars. Those radio hosts, they're terrible. <laughs> Never trust a radio host. Especially those talk hosts, you know? They say stuff, they just make it up. And finally today, the audacity of dope. All Jeremiah Smith, if that was in fact his real name, wanted was to fill his days with pot, booze, dart tournaments, and video games. By themselves, they were perfectly harmless goals assuming Smith didn't drink and throw darts at the same time. (laughs) But what he did uh, to make his mundane dreams come true was so ambitiously ridiculous that you have to be high to attempt this. Yeah, so Smith told his wife and a friend he had stage 4 terminal cancer and only had 18 to 25 months left to live. Then he lowered it to 6 months. Somehow, he was going to have to convince a group of people who knew and cared about him Uh, one of whom he lived with, that he was not only sick but actually about to die. He had no medical records, no oncologist, and for obvious reasons, never let his wife go with him to appointments. (laughs) Uh, Is that a red flag? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Smith quit his job. I'm sure he said he had to quit for medical reasons. Right. And proceeded to not die. (laughs) (laughs) While devastated people performed loving acts of charity. His friend Darlene raised six grand for him through a dart tournament and told uh, CBS that some friends helped pay for his wedding. 
Smith made over $6,800 through GoFundMe. In total, he stole $23,000 but got caught because his wife finally got suspicious. She's like, are you, when are you going to die? <laughs> Wasn't that supposed to be a couple weeks ago? My boyfriend wants to know. Yeah. <laughs> he pleaded guilty in court and got sentenced to 10 years of probation. He should have got five years behind bars and five years of probation. Pretty bad. I, I just, I, you know, you see this everywhere you look. We just recently had a whole town uh, called Paradise, California that was uh, just devastated. Leveled. Leveled. Yeah. And, you know, from all over the world, there are what I deem cockroaches who travel from one disaster to another looking to make a fast buck. Right. And by taking advantage. And you know what they might do? Okay, so that new roof that you're going to need that was torn off, uh, that's going to be uh, $58,000. And what we'll need is 50% up front. Uh, before we get started, sign here. Okay, thank you for the check. It'll be the last time you ever hear from me. Right. And to think that someone has it in their heart, Ronnie, to take advantage of someone whose life has com been completely overturned uh, and, and everything is a struggle and you don't realize it till you're in their shoes, you don't even have clean underwear. I mean, on the flip side of that coin is people who also travel around and say that they lived in paradise. Oh, yeah. They And they get FEMA money. Uh, we have uh, my college roommate, his parents uh, were raising orchids. They had an orchid farm in paradise. They lost it. They lost it completely. They got a big fat check and they said, we're done. Out of they, here. They moved to Florida. Yep. Um, but you, but their, their place was well documented. Problem is, a lot of the places in Paradise are trailers, like double wide, sitting on a piece of property right. with, with no address. Yeah, and so it's a little harder to prove residency. Uh huh. Uh, they don't have electric bills because they have a generator. Yeah. So, you know, there are people that are not getting the money they should, and people that are getting money that should be going to somebody else. And you know what? I hate to oversimplify things, but I will tell you this. If we could find the answer to what goes on in people's mind that pull these kind of things, right. we could solve world peace. Yep. And I know that sounds really corny, and I'm sorry, but these are the kinds of people, or cockroaches, that ruin the world for people with good hearts. And I'm done. I'm getting off of my soapbox. Yeah. If you'd like to contact us, first of all, you can email us. Here come those email addresses right across the stream. Uh, and you can also uh, leave a comment down below. Yeah, love the comments. Uh, and uh, we'd love to have you subscribe to our channel. And it's very easy to do. You just click that button and then click the bell. And that way you'll get notifications each time a new show comes out. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And we'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. Thank you.